Hi, this is Darren from Ale Upholstery and Interiors. Today, I'm going to show you how to upholster this wedding chair. Now, I'm using any material for lining and then cotton felt on top of it so it gives it a nice padding to it. Now, I'm just gluing the front area down. This is the type of staples I'll be using. Now, I'm just going to staple the front first and cut around the wood area at the back and then staple the other three sides. Now I'll be using quarter inch foam gluing down the front area only again. So you don't have to hand stitch the deck. This is one of the ways you can do it. So I'll be using this type of white vinyl. Now I'll be stapling the two sides, locking it in place. Now I'm just going to measure if it's equally balanced and then I'm going to glue where the stitching is. Now I'm trying to glue just where the stitching is. So this is a very important part to make sure you have enough glue sticking on the stitching area. Now I'm going to cut where the wood is and then the letter V. You want to do this to both sides so it fits easily around the wood. Now I'll be stapling all of the back down first. Now I'm pulling the front area down tighter and stapling it down. Now I'll be using 2 inch firm foam and I'm going to cut the angle on it myself with the foam saw. Now I'll be spraying more glue on the edge. Now I'll be using half inch foam to give it extra padding. I'm putting the half inch all the way down to the bottom. Now I'll be using a thin layer of fiber which is an extra step. It gives it a nice soft feel to it. I also think it makes the furniture look a lot better. So I'll be stipping all the bottom down first and then the sides. I do apologize I lost the footage when I was doing the webbing on the inside back. But I'll show you this on the inside arm which is the same thing. Now I'll be using a thick material for lining since I'll be putting buttons on the back. So for the back, I like to pull it fairly tight since I'll be putting buttons on it. So now that I just cut the fabric one inch shorter, I'm folding it and restapling it again. So right now I'll be marking where the center of the back is so I could put my buttons on. So for the size, there's no right and wrong way. It's all preference on how big or small you want it. So I made my size 9 inch top to bottom and 6 inch side to side. So right now I'll be marking it again on the outside back so when you put the buttons on it'll be a guide for you so the buttons will be always straight. Now I'm gluing 2.5 inch medium density foam. So for the sides I'll be cutting a half inch bigger than the frame. And for the top part, it's a little longer because I have to fold it and staple it at the back. So now I'll be using a drill like this and a hole saw and a needle like this. You could either use a needle to poke it up and drill it right away or you could always use a marker and mark it and then drill it afterwards. So you'll be using the same mark you marked earlier on the back and using that to poke it upwards. 
So as you can see, I'm using a market as well and marking it first and then I'll drill it out. Now you want to measure by pushing the tape all the way into the hole and seeing how much fabric you'll need to cut out. So I'll be measuring top to bottom and then side to side. So you want to mark a line going side to side and then top to bottom to get a square that will be used as a guide. It's best to mark it like this if the fabric is plain but on the wrong side of the fabric. Now I'm using a thin layer of fiber. Now I'm just cutting where the holes are. Now I'll be using a 3 inch crystal like this and a 2 pound nylon string. So now I'll be using that line I drew on the fabric as a guide. Putting the fiber actually makes the fabric work a lot easier instead of having the fabric with the foam directly on it. So now I'll be just stapling the first line with staples since it's close to the wood. So now I'll be using some leftover piping and I'm going to tie it. So for one string you want to make a loop for it like this and then you want to put the other string into it and that's the one you're going to be pulling. So this vinyl here that I'm using is very stiff as you can see I'm always hitting it down. So I don't recommend anything too um, stiff or hard. The best thing is to use fabric that's a little soft or else you're going to need foam that's very firm to make sure it puffs up. Now I'm just fixing the pleat making sure it folds downwards. Now I'm using a knife cutting about 2 inches into the foam. The reason why I cut it is so the extra fabric will slide right into it. So even on the sides you want to make sure the pleat is folding downwards. So now I'll be locking a couple staples first and then I'll take it off and readjust again. So I'll be starting from the center part first and working my way outwards.
Now for the side where the frame is, you want to do the same thing as where you cut towards the frame and then the letter V. So here's the webbing stretcher and the two webbing that I'll be using for the inside arm. So now I'm just going to use any fabric for lining. So now I'm using one and a half inch firm foam for the arm so it gives it extra padding. Now I'm using half inch firm foam. Now I'm using one inch medium density foam. For the inside wing, I'll be using 1 inch medium density foam. So for the inside wing, I'll be marking on the wrong side of the fabric with the inside arm. And where I'm going to be marking it, I'll be cutting half inch out. So for the inside arm, I'll be placing where I need it and I'll be drawing where the wing is as well. Now I'm just cutting a half inch away from the pencil mark. The pencil mark is where you're going to be sewing it. For the inside arm, I'll be using a thin layer of fiber. Now I'm just locking a few staples for the front and then I'm going to pull the fabric all the way to the back, make sure it's tight. So once the back is done, I'm readjusting the front again.
And now I'm just going to put a few pleats since it's a curve. So now I'll be clamping the arm and the body together and using screws and bolts. For the outside wing I'll be using half inch foam. So now I'm cutting the fabric enough just for me to fold it inwards so I could put nail studs on it. So I'm just going to lock a few staples on it and then I'm going to release it back once I put the nails. So now that I stapled the outside arm already, I'm just going to be using a half inch cardboard. The reason for the cardboard is so it gives it a nice straight line. Now I'm using any material for lining. So with the padding on top of this lining, the furniture will feel a lot better, not so empty. Now I'm using a thin layer of fiber. So I'm locking a few staples here on the facing because I'll be using nail studs. So for the outside back, I'll be stapling it down and then using half inch cardboard as well. So now I'm making sure the cardboard is inside the frame when I do tack it down with the tacking strip. So for the outside back, I'll be using lining again since it's a big area. It gives it a better feel to the furniture once you put the padding on it. Now I'm using quarter inch foam. So the tacking strip I'll be using looks like this. So when I'm going to be putting the nails on, I'll be using an Offy nail gun. You could either use a hammer and manual do it as well if you like.
Now I'm just using black lining for the bottom. So here's how the finished product looks like. So thank you for watching and if you like the video please give me a big thumbs up and don't forget to like it and share it. Thank you. Bye. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Thank you.